Uh, entomologists like to joke that we're the biologists that have jobs. <laughs> and there's some truth to that uh, because, because there's a lot of pests. Uh, humans have been battling against, against bugs for, for millennia. Um, these things eat our, they destroy our houses, they, they bite our children in the night, they eat our food, right? Um, the, the, you know how many picnics insects have wrecked? It's a lot. It's a lot. Um, and, and insects have killed more, more soldiers than bullets or bombs have. Through disease transmission, insects throughout human history have changed the tides of war, where we've decided to colonize, things like this. But not all insects are pests. In fact, just the finest sliver of the insect community are hurting people. The vast majority, and this is true so much of biodiversity, right? We always focus on the pests. But so much of the life that's out there, we couldn't live without. And so that's what I study. I study how insects help people rather than how they hurt people. And there's a lot of ways. Entomologists estimate that insects contribute between tens and hundreds of billions of dollars annually to, to, to the U.S. economy alone. Uh, how do they do that? Well, they do things, right? Uh, if you like to hunt or fish or bird watch, think a bug. Um, insects are, are, the, are the, the basis of these food webs that, that support the wildlife that we, that we appreciate. Insects provide services. They provide products and values. These are some of my girls here. Um, honey production is a billion dollar industry. We wouldn't have fruits and vegetables without these managed pollinators. Insects are nature's insecticides. By eating pests of crops, they shape when and where you have pest problems. By eating the, 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 the seeds and the green parts and the roots of weeds, Insects have a, uh, have a profound influence on when and where weeds become a problem. We can use these things, right? And insects are a major source of protein for just about every culture except for Western cultures in the, in, around the world. Insects transfer feed into protein better than any of the livestock that we currently raise. And, and, uh, and as such, are, are a really important component of human diets. Uh, if you've ever had crab legs or lobster, I hate to say it, folks, but that's a big bug. But, and that's kind of the cart that a lot of entomologists like to drag out whenever there's, whenever, oh, what's the value of an insect? But it, the value of insects to human society transcends that, that very short list. I mean, the colors, the, the smells, the tastes of our world are largely shaped by the insects that have interacted with plants throughout generations, right? Um, it's the spices in our cupboards, the chemistries that plants uh, create that we then exploit for our medicines, for, for, the, for scents, things like this, for our flavors in our food. That comes as a response to herbivory from insects. The colors of the natural world are attracting pollinators, right? We wrap our bodies in the, in the secretions of bugs. Silk, that's where it comes from. Talk about influencing the path of human history. Look up the Silk Road a few times. And everybody's heard of performance-enhancing drugs. How about performance-enhancing bugs? Everybody was dazed and amazed when the 1992 uh, Chinese uh, women's track team set new records, new world records, after consuming fungal-infected caterpillars. They, they, that's partially uh, their claim to fame. Um, so tremendous, tremendous impact on human society. But how often do we overlook that or stomp it into the ground just to hear that crispy kringle, right? <laughs> these, these insects through... I just love that about them, right? Through small... Individual actions that are aggregated and synergized with one another, insects shape the entire world. 
I recently, uh, my career has led me down a path where I got to uh, interact more and more with a lot of farmers that remind me of bugs. And these guys would actually probably, and gals, would probably be flattered by that. So you know the crowd I run with, okay? Why? Because through small, through small changes to their farms, through, through, through individual actions and aggregating and synergizing these things, these regenerative farmers are literally changing the world. Don't ever, don't ever underestimate the the power of, of little things to, to overcome seemingly insurmountable problems, obstacles. How did I get involved with these guys? Well, I'm an entomologist, and what I was discovering is, as I was talking with some of these farmers is that they were eliminating insecticides from their operations, and that's not supposed to happen. When you have a pest problem, you're supposed to react to that, right? You're supposed to, to control it. What these farmers are doing is, uh, is they're, they're reinventing the system so that they don't have problems to begin with with pests. Okay? So they don't have to react. They've got it all in, built into their system. And this transcends entomology. This transcends pest management. Uh, they're, they're, fa uh, they're, they're calling it regenerative agriculture. Why regenerative? That's a, it's an empowering term. Sustainable agriculture isn't going to cut it anymore. We've degraded our natural resource base to the point where simply sustaining it isn't going to solve the kinds of problems and produce the food that we need. What these guys are doing is they're taking their farms and they're rebuilding the natural resource base while producing food. Key elements of this. Instead of focusing solely on yields or pounds of beef per acre... What they're focusing on is rebuilding soil, especially soil organic matter, the black dirt that we all see. It's that skin that covers much of our terrestrial areas of our planet. While, so they're conserving and promoting soil while conserving biodiversity on their farms. All of the plants, insects, microbes, fungi, things like this, animals on their farm while producing nutrient-dense food, nutritious food, profitably. Those are the key elements. These guys, this is, not, this is a movement that's happening unseen, under the radar screen, right now, across the planet. There's thousands of farmers that I've now visited uh, throughout every different scenario that you can invent, of circumstances, production circumstances that you can envision. And the practices that they put onto their farm to make these systems work vary substantially, but they are unified in, how, in certain principles. Okay? Principles. What are those principles? Well, we're going to talk about those. Number one, they are stopping tillage. Okay? Why? Tillage degrades organic matter in several ways. And the profitability of a farm field is directly correlated with the amount of organic matter in the soil. How does this happen? Through erosion. When you till the soil, it, the water rushes away all, a lot of the topsoil. The wind blows it away over to your neighbor's field. But it also eliminates, disturbs, disrupts the biology of the system that grows that soil organic matter. And so this is usually the first step, almost always, in, in regenerative agriculture. They never leave bare soil. The energy for a farm does not come from a gas can. The energy comes from the sun. And the only way to capture that is with plants. And so when you have bare soil on their farms, what they were finding is that they weren't, they weren't able to hold the soil down, first off, but they also weren't able to capture that energy and turn it into things like crops or animals. Third principle, some biodiversity is better than none and more is better than less. Why is that? Especially with plants. Because biodiversity does things. It provides services, just like all those services I just pointed out with insects. 
biodiversity, the life in that system drives it. And, the, and, and what we found as, in science is that biodiversity scales with how many plant species are in an environment or in a habitat. And, but they're doing it in agronomically feasible ways. Instead of having 30 inches of bare soil between corn rows, they fill it up. Instead of leaving half of the season bare soil, they put cover crops out there. Uh, they vary their crop rotations. They take those field margins and they fill them up with species. And then they are integrating livestock with their crops. Okay? And animals and plants, insects, microbes, all of these things co-evolve together. So this adds an additional revenue stream in addition to um, improving the functionality of those crops. Somewhere down the road, along the line, we went down this path. And this path said that simplifying... Growing, more, <laughs> growing fewer species on more land made you a good farmer. And that simplification of the agroecosystem has had profound effects. Um, because when you eliminate the diversity from your farm, you have to replace it with a, more inputs. This is what the country currently looks like. On 10% of the terrestrial land surface of our country, we have three crop species. We have replaced the, the, the function of hundreds of species with three. And then we maintain the productivity of that with a lot of inputs. Agric you have to replace what biodiversity did with, with agrochemicals. But there's cracks in the ice. We can now correlate things like, like climate change, like pollution, uh, the degradation of rural communities, human health problems, biodiversity loss, like a lot of our bees and butterflies, we can correlate those back to how we're producing food. That's not to say that I hate farmers, right? This isn't, this isn't, this is a, 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 what I look at this is, I mean, this is an opportunity to solve, really improve our natural resource base while producing food in the same place at the same time. That's what these regenerative farmers are doing. Insects see the world much differently than we do. Each of those little facets produces an image. And the insects take all of these different images, these different perspectives, and they combine them into a single image in their brains to perceive the world around them, to perceive the whole system. That's what these regenerative farmers are doing right now. Instead of compartmentalizing each aspect of the farm, they're combining them into a systems-level perspective. I think that that's the future of food production. What these guys are doing boldly, bravely, against the grain, is that they're solving planetary-scale problems with our food system. Thank you very much.